Hey, hi, uh, Tom Trento, director of the United West. And um, it's Sunday morning, uh, November 3rd, 2024, just a couple of days till the election. And my team and I have been going, like everybody else, uh, very, very hard, particularly the past year, trying to mobilize 400,000 registered Republican Christians in the six swing states who did not vote in 2020. If they come out, Trump wins. I am absolutely convinced Trump is going to win because on July 13th, he should have died. God saved him. Why? To be, he's not a perfect human. Tell me who is, uh, but he's the perfect guy to help stop the insanity in this country and restore a constitutional republic. So, but I want to share a personal story with you. Um, 40 years, man, time flies. Any of you kids listening to this, use your time wisely. 40 years ago, uh, this week, I was running a Christian activism organization in, uh, in the state of Colorado out of Denver. And um, two years before the 1984 re-election campaign of Ronald Reagan, um, a group of us decided to uh, amend the constitution of the state of Colorado. That's right, amend it and stop public funding. Colorado was one of the few states in the country that used taxpayers' money to pay for abortions for poor people who couldn't have the abortions. Um, we were pro-life and, uh, and felt taxpayer money shouldn't be used to kill innocent unborn babies. So we launched a campaign. And in the last year, 1983 to 84, my job, we had a wonderful group of, of people. Um, and I played a small part. My job was to mobilize uh, 1 million Christians in the state of Colorado with my organization. I was all over, all over the state, driving, snow, rain, whatever, sun, small airplanes going over mountains, the plane shaking, I'm praying, what am I doing, you know? But uh, we worked every, every, every single day. And then one day uh, toward the end of the campaign uh, in October, the then governor of Colorado, Dick Lamb, he made a public statement because he was totally opposed to what we were doing. And he wanted to continue taxpayer funding of abortions. And he said, um, we have an economic argument. He said it costs $400 to abort a, a baby on uh, on welfare and thousands, I think it was ten or twelve thousand dollars to raise the child to 18 years old. So he said economically it's very, very clear we got to maintain public funding of abortion. Well, to say the least, that infuriated us on so many levels. We picketed at his governor's mansion in downtown Denver and I challenged him to a public debate on the issue. Well, the fool that he was, he agreed to debate me and my good friend Bill Woodley and the governor picked some goofy pro-abortion lady. And um, bottom line, at that debate in this historic church, uh, we kicked their asses on this issue because it's so clear, it's so black and white. You do not kill innocent unborn babies. And um, uh, the, the next element that happened uh, in this campaign, um, I went to a press conference at the state capitol and 18 religious leaders, Catholic, Protestant, and Jewish leaders came out for public funding of abortion against what we were doing. I stood in the back of that press conference. I could not believe what these people were saying. And they're, they're men and women of God. So at the end, I, uh, I raised the question and the uh, moderator who knew me very well said, oh no, we can't, we can't take a question from Trento, no, no. And all the cameras turned and all of that stuff. And, um, uh, and I, I purposely disrupted that because it needed to be disrupted, but it gave me an idea. Uh, if, if the pro-abortion community in the state of Colorado can get 18 religious leaders, I can get 19 religious leaders to stand for life and against public funding. And my team went to work and we only had about two weeks to do this. There were no cell phones. There were no, we had computers, but you know, they were ancient computers. 
phones, dialing phones, calling, whatever. And we called for a press conference in downtown Denver of the religious leaders in uh, the state of Colorado. And I was hoping 19 would come, one more than them. Well, at 12 o'clock, they called for the press conference at one. At 12 o'clock, there's 50 people there. I'm going, what the heck is going on? And by one o'clock, 269 religious leaders from around the state. People had different, you know, religious beliefs. 269 showed up in this room. I, I held the press conference and we did it the Thursday before the Tuesday election. So the other side could not you know, reorganize and respond effectively to what we did. It was a tactical move. And um, I challenged those religious leaders to mobilize the people in their churches to get out and vote for the amendment. It's different in Colorado. We're voting against the amendment. I mean, in Florida, in Colorado, we voted for the amendment to stop public funding of abortion. Well, on that Tuesday night, a few days later, um, actually, we didn't find out until 5 a.m. the next morning. I'm sitting in my little tiny house I'm watching the television and and they say that uh, our amendment passed. We stopped public funding of abortion. Tears started flowing down my eyes. It was very, very um, emotional, very moving. You know, years worth of hard work, a good group of key people, and we stopped public funding of abortion. Well, uh, today the statistics are clear from the state of Colorado. Stopping public funding of abortion allowed 800 children, black children, Hispanic children, poor children. That's who the money was going to kill. 800 um, babies born each year, 40 years later, 32,000 children have been born because of the hard work of a handful of people. Simply amazing. At that point, I said, I've lived my life. If I do nothing else in my life, I thank God for the opportunity I had to participate in saving those those children. And look, we I started, I was involved in starting crisis pregnancy centers. I took in un, uh, women with, uh, uh, pregnant women with no families. So it isn't just fight abortion, it's the aftercare for people in this crisis. And the pro-life community has that, don't let anybody kid you. Well, today, we're a couple of days away in Florida from an amendment to legalize abortion in all nine months. That's what it's all about. And once again, we need uh, the religious leaders of the state of Florida and 10 other states have amendments to um, legalize abortion in a variety of manners in these states, two of which, Nevada and Arizona, are swing states critically important so whoever's getting this message uh, if your state is uh, has an amendment to legalize abortion you gotta you gotta common sense the law science everything else you gotta fight against that you gotta vote against that and for Floridians here we absolutely have to vote no on amendment four no on amendment four that's the amendment to legalize uh, abortion once again, which will include the public funding of abortion eventually in the state of Florida. We cannot allow that to happen. So I just wanted to share this. And if indeed we could mobilize Christians and, um, and, 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 and Jewish people who hold to the sanctity of human life and, and constitutional um, Republicans who believe in the Constitution and have no religious faith, but recognize the importance of life, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We've got to get out and vote if you haven't already, and vote no, please, on Amendment 4. Thank you very, very much. I'll see you on the other side, and hope we can pop some champagne. I don't even like champagne. Give me a good glass of Italian wine, uh, celebrating the fact that this state, Florida, has chose to protect unborn children once again. Thank you very much.